Hi everyone, my name is John Palumbo. We're going to continue with the small group study and we're going to be doing week number five, which is found in Matthew chapter five, verse six. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. The word righteous basically means to maintain a right walk with God. And Jesus is telling us that we need to strive to have a hunger, to have a right walk with God. And there's so many things that are going to try to deviate us from having that right relationship by appealing to our sinful nature, whatever it would be. For instance, when, I, when you think of hunger and thirst, right away you think about food. And I remember growing up when I was a kid, every Sunday morning, I would wake up to the smell of fried meatballs going throughout the house. Now, having meatballs for breakfast would not be the healthiest thing for me to have. Eggs, oatmeal, cereal would be a lot better. But I was fixated on that smell, on that aroma. I wanted a meatball. And obviously, my mother, as soon as one came out of the pan and cooled off, she would, she would fill me, and I would have my fill, and I would have the meatball. But it's not the healthiest thing. The world wants to throw things at us that are not going to be the healthiest things for us to satisfy our cravings. And that's why Jesus is saying, if you're going to be hungry and thirst for something, hunger and thirst for a right walk with God. It says, blessed are those who are hungry, happy are those who are hungry um, to walk right with God because it's essential for our health and our longevity and our walk. Just like food is essential for our longevity and, uh, and our health. Um, when I think of food and people getting um, misdirected, I think of Jacob and Esau, the sons of Isaac. It says in Genesis 25, verse 29, Once when Jacob was cooking stew, Esau came in the field and he saw he was exhausted. And Esau said to Jacob, Let me eat some of that red stew for I'm exhausted. Jacob said, Sell me your birthright now. Esau said, I'm about to die. Of what use is a birthright to me? Jacob said, swear to me now. So he swore to him and sold him his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew, and he ate, drank, rose, and went away. Thus Esau despised his birthright. Esau traded his birthright for stew. Picture this, he's in the field, he's hungry, he's working, he's burning calories, he's dehydrated, his body's hunger and thirst for food. The way I smelled meatballs, he smelled this stew, and he was like, I gotta have this food at all costs. And his hunger for the satisfaction of that momentary need outweighed the blessings of his entitlement as um, being an heir to what his father had to give him. Uh, Jacob also had a hunger. Jacob was a few seconds younger than his older brother Esau. They were twins. In those days, the oldest born was the one that got the heir. They were the one that got everything. Esau was supposed to inherit everything, and Jacob was focused and hungry for the materialistic things that Esau was going to get, and he saw an opportunity I'll satisfy your, your need for today if you satisfy my need for tomorrow by giving me your birthright, which he did. And we basically see these temptations happening all throughout the Bible. In Matthew, um, Esau's hunger was the lust of the flesh. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 3, we see Jesus was hungry after a fast. And the devil said, turn these stones to bread, okay, and eat. But Unlike Esau, Jesus saw through the trap and he wasn't about to, to give in and, and um, lose his focus for a momentary need. He was focused on what God had for him. That's where his hunger and thirst was, not on the things of the world. Jacob had the lust of the eyes. In Matthew 4, 8, the devil showed Jesus all the riches of the world. It said, I'll give you all of this if you worship me. That's where Jacob's mind's at. I want the riches of the world. I want your inheritance. I want all these things of the, of the, of the lust of the, uh, my eyes. And Jesus knew that there was nothing in this world that could satisfy him more than doing his father's will. So he didn't give in to that sin either. When we 
hunger for something, like those meatballs, for instance, you know, they're going to be satisfying for a momentary pleasure, but eventually you're going to be hungry again. Jesus tells us that if we hunger and thirst for his righteousness, for a right walk with God, we will be filled. We're going to be satisfied. Proverbs 27, 20 says that the eyes of man are never satisfied. So no matter how much we get in this world, we're always going to want more. So how do we maintain a right relationship with God? If you look in your outline, maintaining a right relationship with God means to hunger for fellowship with God. A hunger to spend quality time with God is essential for a healthy relationship with Jesus. A hunger to study the Bible is essential for a healthy relationship with Jesus. We need to make an appointment sometimes with God because we're all guilty of letting the day get away from us. Sometimes you may have to get up an hour earlier, dedicate part of your lunch hour, put God on your calendar so that every day you can spend some quality time fellowshipping with God. It is essential to our health and our Christian walk to do that. And many times we give him the last food of the day at night when we're tired and we're, we're too tired to even really do anything. And we kind of shortchange God on that. So have a hunger for um, fellowshipping with God. In your outline under number two, maintaining a right relationship with God means to hunger to praise God. Praising God can be done in many ways, whether it be worship music or singing praise music. Praising God could be as simple as saying, thank you, Jesus, for everything you've given me. I love you. That goes such a long way. Just to let God know you appreciate and you're praising him for what you have. Okay, that would go such a long way and it is, it's, it's essential to satisfy the hunger of a right walk with God and maintaining our relationship with God. In number three in your outline, maintaining a right relationship with God means to hunger to love one another. In life, we all have different personalities. There's going to be personality conflicts. Some people may rub us the wrong way, and we got to exercise what I call EGR, extra grace required. But you need to remember you have a personality too, and you might rub someone the wrong way, and other people may be applying extra grace to their relationship with you. We are all part of God's family. We all call God Father. The Apostle Paul wrote to the Galatian church, it's Galatians 6, 9, he said, Let us not grow weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Paul is calling us a family of believers, okay? And how do we express our love for one another? By being good and doing good things for one another. That means we need to have a hunger to carry each other's burdens. Have a hunger to restore each other if someone falls or slips. Have a hunger to do good to the body of Christ because we're all brothers and sisters and God did not call us to have a sibling rivalry with each other. So we need to remember, we all call the same God Father. And having a hunger to do good to one another and love one another is going to help us to have that healthy relationship in that right walk with God as we hunger and thirst for that. To conclude, um, when we eat food, when we're hungry for food, it's our body's way of telling us we need nourishment. When we're thirsty for water, it's our body's way of telling us we're dehydrated. And that's our body's way of telling us we need these substances to survive. Well, Jesus is saying we need to hunger for a right walk with him and a right relationship with him for our Christian relationship and walk to survive. Because if we don't feed that Christian walk in us, it's going to eventually phase out. It's going to run out of energy. Um, years ago, I used to always go to the gym. Think of it like this. Nobody is eager to get up in the morning and go jogging. But you got to push yourself. You got to strive for it. As you have a hunger to get into shape, you're going to get stamina. Your body's going to start to show changes. You're going to lose weight. You're going to get muscle tone. And as you see these results, you're going to get a hunger to want to do it more and more and more. You're going to have the ability to do it more and more and more. Well, as we hunger for 
righteousness and thirst for righteousness and that right walk with God, it's going to start off maybe a little challenging. But as we continue to do it, we're going to get a stamina and you're going to see spiritual changes happen. We're going to see our minds transform to the mind of God. We're going to become in tune with the Holy Spirit's leading. And our relationship with God is going to grow stronger and stronger. And it's going to motivate us to want to continue in this walk because you're going to feel the presence of God moving in your life. And you're just going to want it to continue to get stronger and stronger. And you're going to want to feed that desire. And the way you feed that desire is by applying the three principles that we just spoke about. You're going to see now in your notes, there's five questions. i like for you right now to break up with your group. And to go over these five questions, if you could get through all of them or some of them, depending on how you can spend quality time with God and how you can satisfy that hunger and thirst for righteousness in a way, as Jesus says, you will be fulfilled. I hope this lesson was a blessing to you, and I hope you get a lot out of it. Thank you very much.